Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the completed contract method. The completed contract method is part of contract accounting. There are two methods to account for long-term construction project or long-term contract or contract accounting and those are the percentage of completion method which we looked at in the prior session. So if you did not look at the percentage of completion method, I suggest you go back and view it and understand it before we cover the completed contract method which we would look at in this session. So in this session we're going to focus on the completed contract method. But it's very important to review both methods, the completed contract method as, as well as the percentage of completion method to just kind of put things into perspective. When do we use the percentage of completion method and what does that mean? It means you can recognize some revenues and gross profit before the project is completed. There are certain conditions that you have to meet in order to use the percentage of completion method. Again, this is a review. I'm going to review them, but if you need a more depth explanation, go back to the prior session. First, you must be able to estimate the progress, somehow estimate the progress of the of the project. How? By using some sort of a measuring stick to, to count, to account for that progress. Cost can be used to estimate the progress. So cost can be used as a reasonable estimate, not the, on, not the only measuring stick, but the most common one. In addition to, to measuring your progress, you have to have three other conditions to exist. You have to have an enforceable and clear contract where the rights and the obligation of both parties are spelled out, including consideration, how much money we're going to be exchanging. The buyer is expected to make the payment to satisfy their obligation. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's useless in a sense that you can't recognize the revenue. Two, the seller also expected to satisfy their obligation under the contract. Under those conditions, we will be able to use the percentage of completion method. Completed contract method is usually used for short-term project because it's for one year. Therefore, you don't need to use the percentage of completion method. Or it's used when we fail the percentage of completion method condition. So we fail some of those conditions. Well, remember, you have to meet all three. So even here, when you have enforceable enforceable contract, buyer expected to make the payment, seller expected to satisfy if you fail any of them. Or obviously, if you cannot measure your progress toward the project, then you have a problem. Also, the contract could have inherent risk beyond the normal reoccurring business risk. For example, you could have a political risk. And the main example I usually give is Airbus or Boeing contracting with the country of Iran. Iran is under sanctions from the US. So what happened is Boeing signed a contract with the Iranian Aviation Agency. Well, there's always a good chance where the administration, the US administration, ask Boeing to cancel that contract. In other words, you cannot go into that contract, you cannot implement, you cannot deliver. Therefore, it's that political risk. Because of that, Boeing cannot recognize any revenue, although they might be doing some work because of the inherent risk that they may not be able to complete the, the project. So, when to recognize revenue under the completed contract method? Well, from the word completed contract, at the end of the project. You, you can only recognize revenue, and this is important. This is the difference. Now, this is new information. Now, this is new. It's when you complete the project, you can recognize the revenue. This is what the completed contract method is. So simply put, as you are going throughout the years, throughout the periods, you don't make any entries for revenues, cost, or gross profit. As we are doing the work, you don't do that. Why? Because we really don't know how much revenue we are going to have until we finish the project. Once we finish the project, we completed the project. Now, if we completed the project, now we are expected to be paid. Now we are expected to, uh, well, we, we basically, we assuming we're expected to be paid, we satisfied our obligation and we don't have to measure our progress. We're done with the work. Therefore, it's time to recognize the revenue. The best way to illustrate this concept is actually to, to, to work an example. But before we look at an example for the completed contract method, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. My motto is helping, saving accounting students and CPA candidate one at a time by providing you with resources lectures, multiple choice, true, false, additional exercises that's going to help you understand the concept and do better in your courses on, on the CPA exam. My courses, 
my CPA material is aligned with your Roger, Becker, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, whatever course you are taking. Also, I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions, and I kept them in their original format, but I added a detailed solution because the AI CPA don't give you the solution. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Connect with me on YouTube. Subscribe, share it, like this video. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at this example. Adam Construction Company had a contract to construct a $1 million highway. The contract to start March 1st, and to be completed March 1st, X1, and to be completed December, X3. Adam Company cannot measure the progress toward completion. Simply put, they signed this contract, but there's a lot of uncertainty about cost, so they cannot measure their cost toward completion. Well, that's gonna fail a major condition to be able to use the percentage of completion method. They cannot use it because they cannot, they don't have a yardstick. They cannot use a certain yardstick. Then what's going to happen is this. Under those circumstances, they're, they're going to have to use the completed contract method. So using the same data that we used in the prior example, I'm going to show you what entries do you make under the completed contract method. Again, real quick, I'm going to explain the information given. But again, if you want more detailed about the information, you have to go back to the percentage of completion method. But basically, you are giving cost to date, how much cost you incur up to this point, in year one, 200,000, estimated cost to complete the project, 550,000, progress billing during the year, 175, cash collected, 140. Now, also, although you are estimating the cost to complete, you're saying, well, I can estimate the cost to complete, but we really don't know how much it's going to change substantially. This is just, we, we don't have a good idea. But this is just basically an estimate and we cannot measure the progress because it could change because the nature of the work. So this is what we're going to be assuming. So we're going to go ahead and look at the journal entries first at the balance sheet journal entries. Well, guess what? Balance, balance sheet journal entries are the same as percentage of completion. What does it mean? The same. Let's go over them as well. We spend 200,000 in year one on the project. We debit construction and process. And please keep track of a T account for each account. We're gonna debit construction and process, which is an inventory account for 200,000 credit, material, cash, payable, whatever we paid. This is for the 200,000. Account receive, uh, we bill the client 175,000. We're gonna debit account receivable 175,000. However, we are going to credit billing on construction. We don't credit sales. You're saying, but aren't, am I not billing the customer? Yes, you are billing the customer and you created an asset of 175,000, but what's gonna happen is you cannot count it as a sales yet. What you're gonna do, you're gonna have it in an account called billing on construction. So what is the billing account? The billing account is a contra CIP, a contra construction and process or construction and progress. What does that mean? It means you did the work, you build the client, you have a financial asset of 175,000. Now at the same time, you cannot have a financial asset and a physical asset because you're also building the highway and you are, you are Counting, accounting for the 200,000 also as inventory. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna account for the financial asset, which is you're gonna build the customer, but you're gonna have to reduce your CIP. Your CIP is 200,000. It's gonna be reduced by 175 because you build the client. So you cannot have the physical asset that you are building on the books because you did not deliver it yet and have the financial asset related to it. So if you build the client, you have to reduce your physical asset. You cannot have both. So billing on construction is a contra CIP. Then the cash collected is 140,000. We debit cash, credit account receivable to reduce the account receivable because we collected from the client. Year two, cost to date is 500,000. Therefore, we debit construction and process 300,000. Hold on a second. Is this a mistake? No, it's not. Remember how the information is giving. Be careful. I emphasized this in the prior session. You are giving cost to date. If cost to date is 500,000 in year two, you already accounted for 200,000. So it, mean, it means in year two. So, so in other words, cost in year two alone 
is 300,000. Therefore, we debit CIP 300,000, credit material cash payable, whatever we spent, 300,000. Same thing, we bill them 340, we debit account receivable, credit billing, then we collect the 300,000 debit cash credit account receivable, and hopefully you'll be able to do the entry for year three. So those are the balance sheet entries. So where are the income statement entries? So why didn't I computed the percentage of completion for year one, year two, and year three? I don't do this. Why not? Because I am using the completed contract method. I cannot accurately or have a good estimate about my progress in this project. Therefore, I cannot use those percentage of completion. I have to use the completed contract method. Well, so what do I have to do? Guess what do I have to do? I, bef but before we look at the uh, income statement account or whatever related to the income statement, I'm going to go back also and cover this, how things are presented on the balance sheet, because it's important, just in case you did not view the prior session. That's why I would do it. In year one, you have an account receivable of 35000 which is you bill the client 175 the client paid 140 What's left is 35 Then... You have a CIP of 200,000. You have a $200,000 CIP. You have a billing of 175. Remember, the billing is a contra CIP. Therefore, CIP minus the billing will give you CIP in excess of billing as a current asset of 25,000. So this is a current asset. Let's take a look at the balance sheet in year two. In year two, your account receivable is 75 because in the prior year, it was 35. Then you build the client 340. Then you collected 300,000. That's gonna give us, hopefully my math is right, 75. Now in, by year two, your CIP is half a million. Your CIP is half a million. You build the client 515,000. What happened in year two is you build the client more than your CIP. So you build the client for more, for more work than you have done. Well, now we have billing, an account called billing in access of CIP. When you bill the client more than the work that you have done, this, this difference becomes a current liability. Why? Because you have more billings than CIP, you have more obligations, you have more work to do to satisfy your obligation, and obligation is a liability. So make sure you know, because on the CPA exam, they ask about this, how things are presented on the balance sheet. Again, let's go ahead and ask, where are the income statement account? Because in the prior session, when we, when we, when we, when we, when we use this example, uh, using the percentage of completion method, we had income statement entries for year one, year two, and year three. This is for the percentage of completion. Obviously, I'm not gonna go over this. You can view the prior recording. So for the completed contract method, guess what? You have nothing for year one, you have nothing for year two, and in year three, you recognize all the revenue and all the cost and all the gross profit all at once. So let me show you. If you account for cost year one, year two, and year three, it will be 200,000. This is, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, cons uh, CIP, construction and process, which is the profit, is 200,000 for the project. If you look at the expenses, 200,000, 300,000, and 300,000, they add up to 800,000. You do it all at once in year three when you complete the project. And if you account for the revenue, 266, 667,000, 358, 333, and 375, you have a total revenue of a million. Therefore, those three entries, you combine them and you book them in year three when you did complete the project. Now, obviously, what you would kept track of is CIP and billing, and hopefully you did this as I, as I suggested you do. Your CIP account will have a million dollar. Your billing will have a million dollar. What you do, you close the project, you debit billing, you debit billing for a million, you credit CIP, you debit billing, you credit CIP to finish the project. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs and use other resources to reinforce the concept that you have learned. Once you understand the completed contract, once you understand the percentage of completion method, it's easy to understand the completed contract method. Invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Your accounting education is important. It will pay you dividend down the road. Your CPA certification is important. Your accounting certification is important. Any, any and each one of them. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.